welcome to Learn Electronics, your free blog of electronics with video tutorials, articles and a lot of other free stuff. In this tutorial, I will show you how to perform MOSFET low frequency AC analysis using LTSPICE. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to estimate and validate through simulation the low frequency AC gain and the input and output resistances of a simple voltage amplifier. The design goal uh, is to compute the low frequency AC gain AV of uh, this simple amplifier depicted in uh, in the uh, figure. So with the drain resistance RD equal to 5 kilo ohms, a gate resistance RG equal to 2 mega ohms, and the supply voltage VDD equal to 5 volts. The amplifier is loaded by a load resistance RL equal to 100 kilo ohms. I make uh, the assumption that the voltage drop across this uh, feedback resistance RG is uh, zero. That is that the, uh, the current uh, flowing through this resistance is negligible. This lead to uh, VGD uh, equal uh, to, uh, to zero. This means that this configuration ensures that my transistor is kept in saturation. In my simulation, I use a 0.5 micron CMOS process with a VTN of 0.7 volts, a process transconductance KN prime equal to 100. Uh, and 56 microamps per square volts and the transconductance parameters Kn equal to 0.3 milliamps per square volts and an early voltage VA equal to 50 volts. In my pencil and paper calculation I use a simple uh, level 1 SPICE model. So, uh, with this model, the uh, uh, drain current in saturation is given by the following equation, in which I, I am neglecting the channel length modulation effects. So, by replacing VGS with VDS, uh, I have this new expression for ID. Also, I observe that uh, voltage VDS, that is the voltage drop from drain to source, can be computed applying the uh, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff voltage law uh, to the output mesh, uh, which leads to VDS equal to VDD minus RDID. To compute the, uh, the drain current, I have to, to solve uh, this very simple uh, system or two equations. By substituting uh, the second equation into the first one, I obtain uh, an expression for ID. Solving this simple second order equation, uh, I have uh, two solutions for my drying current, namely uh, 1.49 milliamps and 0.5 milliamps. I have to check which one or these two solution is the correct one. That is, which one is current uh, with our assumption of MOS transistor in saturation. So, if I replace ID equal to 1.49 milliamps in the second equation, uh, I can calculate VDS. So, with this value of ID I have a VDS equal to minus 2.45 volts that is not consistent with the uh, assumption of MOS transistor in saturation since VDS must be larger than the overdrive voltage. Consequently, uh, ID equal to 0.5 milliamps is the correct solution and this leads to VDS equal to VGS equal to 2.5 volts. Now that I have computed all the uh, DC uh, parameters, I can uh, compute the 
a small signal uh, parameters, that is uh, transistor transconductance, GM, and transistor uh, channel uh, resistance, RO. By replacing the DC values uh, in, in the uh, equation of the transconductance GM, I obtain a GM equal to 0.54 millisiemens. And uh, an RO equal to 100 kilo ohms. So, I have completely described the, the MOS transistor um, and I can replace the, uh, the transistor uh, DC uh, model into, uh, into my circuits. To compute the output voltage, I have to consider the output mesh and apply the Ohm's law to the output mesh. Consequently, the, uh, the voltage gain, AB, that is defined as BO divided by uh, BI, is equal to minus 2.45 uh, now, uh, I want to uh, check by simulation that uh, my estimation is correct. So, uh, I open LTSPICE with my schematic and um, I perform first a DC analysis. Observe that um, I can uh, deduce the size of my transistor M1 uh, from uh, the specification on process transconductance and on the transconductance parameters. Uh, this leads to a, a MOS transistor with a channel width uh, 1 micron and channel length equal to 0.5 micron. That is the minimum length allowable by this technology. I will also to include the library with my uh, SPICE parameters for the transistor. The file is called uh, o 5 o underscore uh, level 8 dot lib. And uh, I'm using uh, in my simulation a uh, level 8 SPICE model. To run ADC analysis, I have to include in the schematic uh, my uh, SPICE directive uh, specifying a, a DC analysis, so a dot .op command. I can include this command uh, directly using uh, the uh, dot .op button in my uh, menu or choosing simulate, edit simulation command and then DC operation point. So I run my simulation and I observe the value of the drying current. I can see that the real drying current simulated is uh, 0.28 milliamps. So in my pencil and paper calculation, I have overestimated the real drying current. This means that I have to fine-tune uh, my, uh, my design in order uh, to match the expected current and the expected output voltage. So what I can do is, for example, to change the, the width, to increase the width to 2.4 micron. And if I run once again the simulation, I can see that my drain current is now approximately uh, 0.5 milliamps and the output voltage, that is the drain voltage, is approximately 2.5 volts. What I can do now is check the DC, uh, the DC gain of my amplifier. To, uh, to compute uh, the DC gain on my amplifier, um, I must uh, first plot 
the transfer function of my, uh, of my amplifier that is uh, the function that relates the uh, the output voltage to, to the input voltage. To do this I have to perform a DC sweep uh, sweeping the input uh, source V the, uh, the in. Okay, so to uh, to configure a DC sweep I go to simulate, edit simulation command and choose DC sweep. I have to specify the uh, name of the source to sweep, the type of sweep, in this case I, I choose a linear sweep, uh, the start voltage, the end voltage and the increment. That is uh, 0.1 mi uh, millivolts. Okay, if I run the simulation and plot the output voltage I have my uh, DC transfer function so the, the voltage gain in saturation is the slope of this uh, of this curve of the transfer function in the uh, in the saturation region that is in the in the region where uh, the voltage varies uh, linearly. Okay, to to compute the slope, I uh, simply plot the derivative of this curve. So I write minus d that stands for derivative of the out my function. So I can see that at my bias point of 2.5 volts the uh, voltage gain is 1.54 so in my pencil and paper calculation I have overestimated also the gain if I want I may also perform a transient analysis to, um, to observe the amplifier behavior uh, in response to an input transit. To configure a transit analysis I have to use the SPICE command dot tran. To configure a simulation I go to simulate, edit simulation command and choose transit analysis. Um, setting the, uh, the stop time and the maximum time step. To uh, configure the, the input source with the a, a sinusoidal voltage, I right click on uh, my uh, voltage generator, voltage source, and select the advanced option uh, to open the, uh, the voltage source configuration window. So I, uh, I choose a sine function. And I set the C offset uh, to 0 volt, the uh, peak amplitude to 0.3 volts, and the frequency to 10 kilo ohms. So if I run the simulation and plot the output voltage and the input voltage, I can observe the amplifier response to a sinusoidal input. The input and output sinusoid uh, um, are not in phase because I have um, an inverting, uh, I have designed an inverting amplifier. So there is um, a phase difference of uh, 180 degrees between the uh, input voltage in blue and the output voltage in yellow in this figure. Now, if I come back to my presentation, I want I want to compute the input and output resistances. I can compute the input resistance uh, by simply applying the definition. So, by definition, the input resistance of the amplifier 
is the relation uh, between the uh, input voltage uh, VI and the input current II. So, uh, replacing, uh, uh, solving and replacing the, uh, the value, uh, I obtain an input uh, resistance of 580 kilo ohms. To compute the, the output resistance, I have to turn off all the independent uh, voltage sources uh, in, the, in my circuit and apply a test voltage source dx uh, to, uh, to the output of the amplifier. The output resistance can be computed as the uh, relationship uh, between the output test voltage v, uh, Vx and the output test current Ix. So this leads to uh, an output resistance of 4.75 kilo ohms. The next step is to check by a simulation uh, that this estimation are correct. So I come back to my schematic and to, to calculate input and output resistances, uh, I run a DC transfer analysis uh, to compute the uh, transfer function mm -hmm. and uh, by stepping uh, the, the input source uh, the in. So to, um, to configure the dot tf analysis, I go to simulate, edit simulation command and select DC transfer by specifying the output node and the source voltage. By using the dot op command, I uh, specify uh, the stepping of the source voltage the in. So I run the simulation and I want to plot, for example, my output resistance first. So I have this curve that is function of the input voltage. I want to compute the output resistance uh, when the voltage is 2.5 volt. Okay, this leads to an output uh, resistance of 4.53 kilo ohms, so very close to my estimation. Let's see the output, the input resistance now. So I plot the input impedance and I am interested in computing the, the input impedance at 2.5 volts. So I can see that with this bias, my uh, input resistance is 787 kilo ohms, so larger than my estimation. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find that this is useful for you, please support Learn Electronics with a donation a Facebook like, a plus one on Google Plus, or a tweet to your friends. Follow Learn Electronics on the social networks and check the website periodically for new free material. Bye.